thought you could have a pity party. Yeah. Don't you ain't got to call folk together to have a pity party. All you got to do is just stand there and go to talking, and, pity, and the other pity party is gonna come to your party. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We need to start doing is having some trains. Right. Yes, I had some good days. Yes, I had some hills to climb. Yes, I had some weary days. Yes, I had some troubled times. But when I take a look around and start to think things over, I discover that all of my good days outweigh my bad days. So I won't complain. You follow me? Never you complain. You are tempting God. Never you tempting God. You ain't in a covenant relationship with Him. You in a convenience. You with God because He makes things good. God wants us to be with Him, whether things are good or not. And so, don't live by bread alone. Don't tempt God. Then, lastly, don't serve anything, anyone but God. Of course, we know the first commandment of the team: Thou shalt not have no other God before Me. God exalted his children way back then. He was the only one worthy of worship. That's the same way it is today, my friends. When we decide to put our faith in our bank account, we decide to put our faith and our trust in our job. We decide to put our faith and trust in a spouse that's bringing home some good money. Then we made them subconsciously our God. Yeah. Only God is worth and deserving of all of our praise. That particular phrase came about when the devil took Jesus up to that exceeding high mount. Showed him all of the kingdoms of the world and the glory thereof. And told him if, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you everything that you see. But that's when Jesus said, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. In other words, Jesus was telling the devil, I don't need things to be happy in this life. As a matter of fact, he said in Luke chapter 12 and verse number 15 that we need to take heed and beware of covetousness because a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 26, Jesus said, What is a man profit if he will gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? The Lord was letting us know that you can't serve two masters. Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 24. He said you love one and hate the other. Or hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. Simply put, you cannot serve both God and the things of this world. So we're faced with a choice to make. Whether or not we're going to be in covenant. Or are we going to stay in a convenient relationship? When you are in a covenant, you want to be in the presence of God on Sunday morning and on Sunday night. But when you in a convenience, you come and punch your time card in the morning and think that you're good for the rest of the week. When you are in a covenant, you serve God when your gas tank is full. And you serve God when your gas tank is empty. But when you in a convenience, when your gas tank gets empty, you start compromising your Christianity just to get some gas. When you're in a covenant, it doesn't make any matter whether things are well or whether I'm down on my sick bed. But when you're in a convenience, your faith starts to waver and you start to give up on God because you're feeling bad in your body. And the central focus and point of this message 
message this morning is to teach you that if you're going to be in covenant with God, then it's all or nothing at all. God don't want no part-time people serving Him when it's convenient to. God wants people who will serve Him regardless of what's going on. He wants you to serve Him whether you have something and serve Him when you're down to nothing. Because it's when I'm down to nothing, if I'm in a covenant, that I know that my God is up to something. So I don't mind being down to nothing because I realize that the same God that allowed me to get down to nothing is the same God that's going to bring me up to something when he realizes I can handle the nothing. Are you in a covenant or are you in a convenience? Central focus of this message is to help you understand where you are when you complain about the way God's taking care of you. You must be in a convenience because God's covenant children don't dare complain. Job was a covenant child. I know he was. I know he was. He told his wife, we have received good at the hand of God. Yes, sir. Shall we not receive the evil as well? Yes, sir. I mean, let's balance this thing out. I don't serve God because things are always good. I serve Him because He is God. And I am His child. God said, come out from among them and be said. I will be to you a God and you will be to me a people. And as long as you are God's people, you don't have anything to worry about. Didn't David say, I have been old, I have been young, and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed, nor his children begging anybody for bread. Lord don't forsake his righteous children. That's what you got to keep in mind. If I'm going through some hard time, it's not that God has forsaken me. He's allowing me to go through this for a reason. He's allowing me to go through this for a purpose. I'm going to prove to God that I'm his child in or out of tribulation. Therefore, I won't complain. I'm going to enjoy my unfavorable circumstances. Paul and Silas locked down in prison, singing and praying at midnight. I don't know why they waited till midnight. Perhaps it was because midnight was the beginning of a new day. And the fact that they had made it through the night they couldn't wait till the sun rose to give God praise. So they started up at midnight singing and praying to God. They didn't complain. Oh, woe is me. We sit here in this jail for something that we hadn't done. They praised God. Regardless of what they've been through. And God honors his children's praise. Because the Bible records that was a great earthquake. Mm, yeah. Some some nut try to make that a natural catastrophe of happenstance. Oh. You must be out your mind. <laughs> that was God honoring yes, his children's praise. Yes. God shook that jail well, yeah. to the extent that the doors flung off. Yes, the shackles came off their feet. Oh. Came off their hands. Yes, Jayla slept through the whole thing. Woke up and realized that all the doors were open. He said, I might as well go and do it myself. <laughs> Paul said, don't do yourself no harm. We're still here. What is it that y'all have? And I don't have. The Bible says it came before the trip. 